like a tsunami. All right. I didn't want to come, all right? Because um, I didn't know where to come and who to stay with or anything like that. But long story short, I met a gentleman the next day because I'm like, Lord, is this you or me? And towards the end of our conversation, we were talking about the Lord, told him that I was coming to the Pacific Northwest. He says, that's where we live. You can come stay with us. We got a big house out in Gig Harbor. And you can have the whole upstairs. Well, I kept throwing the fleeces out, and God kept answering those fleeces. Amen. So Amen. that's how I ended up here. And he told me that he was going to move like a tsunami. The first week I was here, in less than seven days, I met a man named Moses Bay, who had been preaching since he was 15. He was 85 years old. He had been preaching for 70 years. And he said that God said that he was going to move like a monsoon. Never saw the man before, but he confirmed the word that God put in my heart. Amen? And then I heard a pastor here say that God was going to move like rolling thunder. So in less than seven days, God had confirmed his word. Amen. And I've been through some things since I've been here. Amen? I've been through some things, but it was to prepare me. Amen. It was to prepare me. It was to show me what was inside of me. Amen. The book of Acts in 532 say God gives his spirit to those who obey him. Amen. So when people mock me and laugh at me and scorn me, God didn't tell me to get angry. He told me to bless them, to forgive them, to pray for them. So see, yeah, they did those things, but the correction was for me. You have to, if you want to walk in the anointing, it's a price to pay. Yes, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's a price to pay. That means that you got to suffer with Christ in order to reign with him. Amen. You got to be willing to be laughed at and mocked and talked about because they did it to our Savior. Yeah. Amen. 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 But it's a reward that comes with it. The, the disciples suffer. They were mocked. They were laughed at. Who am I? You know. Why shouldn't I suffer? God suffered with me. Praise God. <laughs> he did. He was very long-suffering. So in, in Acts 4 and 32, we see here, um, it says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them, that, that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the res resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. We read how the disciples walked in, and their shadows healed people. Amen. We've been hearing pastors say it's a new day. God gonna do a new thing. Amen. 
see, for a long time, the church just been church as usual. Amen. We come to a building sick, we leave sick. We come with a headache, we leave with a headache. Hallelujah. We come with AIDS, we leave with AIDS. But we serve the true and the living God that made everything. Scientists have discovered that there's over 900 billion galaxies and 70 trillion stars in each galaxy. And he just spoke and it was. The book of Revelation declares that the heavens, the, 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 the heavens tried to flee before God. That's his majesty and his power. It's a new thing getting ready to happen. Now this word came with a joy and it came with a rebuke. God said, get it together. No more playtime. Get before God. You ain't got to come before me. I don't have a heaven or hell to put anybody in. All right. Amen. 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 I didn't prepare your mansion in heaven. My blood is not on the altar in heaven. Crying mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't have a heaven and hell to put you in. And if I have any power to raise you from the dead and heal you, it came from him. That's my source. Hallelujah. So God is going to do a new thing. Jesus said greater works. I ain't seen nobody walking on water yet. I've seen a lot of people be saved. But he said greater works. Greater works. He's just not talking about physical works. He's talking about spiritual. Why wouldn't God bless us? He ain't reading the Wall Street Journal. He don't have to pick the right stocks to make us blessed. And turn that door into gold. If we have faith to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Peter had faith. I don't know Peter. He the only one got out the boat and started walking. Right? <laughs> you nobody else get out the boat. Hallelujah. He, he might have started sinking. Yeah. But he got out that boat and Peter walked on water. Yes, he did. He didn't start to sink until he started fearing God. I mean, fearing the situation that he was in. We have to have pit bull faith. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what people say. If God professed this word over my life, I believe. Now, we prayed a thousandfold return over our monies. I'm believing for that. We pray for the pastors, the apostles, the bishops of these churches. I'm believing that God is going to do exactly what we ask him to do. I don't really care what I see. There's a man, Glenn Brinkley, he was here. And he talked about Ryan Hard Bunk that led over a million people to Christ. In, in one service. In one service. But you know where Ryan Hart started out at? He preached to empty chairs. Right. Wasn't nobody in the church. Because he said, I knew God would do it. Yes. Yeah. Empty chairs, not a soul in there. But he had his eyes and his mind focused on God. And God brought it to pass. So this comes with a, it's a beautiful word, it's a word of rejoicing, but it's also a word of rebuke God is saying to his people, get it together. Get it together. No more playing church. No more talking to the air. Talk to him. Hallelujah. Let your praises be like this. This is not for a show. This is for his glory. Hallelujah. People coming in this church, babes in Christ, they sing rings of fire. Hallelujah. God has called them to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. The word has prophetically been spoken over their lives. Amen. It's time for us to believe God. Not what we see. Not what we see. We don't walk by what we see. We walk by what God said back in the late 80s. I'm going to say this, I'm done. 
when they finally, well, when they had um, all these rappers, Easy and everybody, <laughs> folks was coming out with AIDS, you know what I'm saying? Back in those days. Well, I just was like, I do not want to hear it, you know? It ain't holy. And the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to use them. Pray for them. Now Apollonia is saved and preaching the gospel. She was in Purple Rain. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. some of y'all that was back in the 80s, you remember Salt and Pepper's Hill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. So, oh. it's preaching the gospel. Yeah. 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 Got a powerful ministry. Hey. God, the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to use them. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm going to use them. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Dre, he's preaching the gospel. Yeah. All those rappers back there. Amen. Not all of them, but you know what I'm saying. And they claim. They believe in the raw power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe that this generation here, because I've been seeing this generation, um, they want the power of God. They just don't want church as usual. You know? They want to experience the power of God. And these young people are living their lives the way God wants them to live. I commend them for that. Amen. And when we learn that if we are one people, we can get this done. Amen. Can I have just a few more seconds? I'm just going to do a few more minutes. Um, Genesis 11. Genesis 11. We're going to talk about a people that wasn't saved and show you what a people that wasn't saved and didn't love God could do. Didn't even love God. Amen? Amen. Power of unity. I mean, you know that the Holy Ghost is the spirit of unity. Amen. Amen. All this division in the body of Christ. Come on, you know, that's a yeah, that's a that's a demonic Ooh, Yes, that is a demonic trick that the enemy has been using since Cain and Abel. That's right. Oh well really we can go back to Adam because he separated God and Adam. Division has been one of his strongest strategies. Amen. And keeping people divided. Amen? But I tell you one thing, the kingdom of darkness stands in unity to destroy us. We need to get on board and do what God said do. Unity came from God, not from the devil. He stole what God gave to us. Yeah. I see why God sent me to a military state. Y'all understand warfare and unity. You want to be in the trenches with somebody that's going, that's got your back. Right. Hey, man, you don't want to be in the trenches with somebody. When the enemy come, they gone. Run. Run. <laughs> you know? Or if you don't do something right, they gone. You want somebody down in that foxhole with you. I don't care what's going on. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Warfare. Amen. But this is what a people that don't even know God can do with unity. Chapter 11 says, and the whole earth was one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. They dwelt there. And they said to one another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to. Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people 
is one. They have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing, absolutely nothing, will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Why? Because they were one. That's the power of unity. That's the power that comes when we say, Lord, it don't matter if they don't like what I say and what I look like. Bless them anyhow. It don't make no difference if they say, well, I don't believe what you believe. Pray for them anyhow. When it's all over and said and done with, it's between you and God. Amen. Amen. So I just encourage you to be on one accord. Holy Ghost is the spirit of unity, the spirit of one, but he's also the spirit of fire. Pastor Glenn said that he opened up and saw a map and saw a fire in the Pacific Northwest. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. God had a blessing to his word. Bless the people. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. We just thank God. Amen. Mother gave her flames. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Not only did she respond to the Holy Ghost, she gave us her flames of fire. Amen. And I pray that you have enjoyed that. At this time, we're going to praise and worship. Our goal today, I'm going to have y'all out of here. Amen. By three. Amen. We're going to be in obedience to that. Is that all right? Amen. Come on, Brother Andre. Not you, Pammy. Thank you. Come on. Raise this young man up. Amen. Everyone, if you can, let's get up on our feet. Everyone, come on, Leggy. All right. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on.
praise. If you ever notice, even at a football game, the world got enough sense to lift up a banner of sand and begin to raise it and for their team to win. Hallelujah. Why can't we wave our towels up to the Lord and let them know that we have victory on this day? Come on, believers. Oh, bless your day. I found out sometimes even when I'm sick, Bishop, I take my towel and I begin to put it around my neck and I can walk through the house proclaiming God's victory. Why don't you believe today? I bless you today with these towels and our first segment of our women's conference, the inner beauty in you. Come on and give God some praises. God bless you. Amen. You may take your seats. Oh, that was a good one. I'm looking for my towel now. <coughs> Before our bishop leaves, I see him leaving us yet. He'll be right here. Amen. While you're catching your breath, we just want to let you know we thank you all again for making 2012 in obedience. My bishop gave me some walking orders, and I was like, Dad, look at the calendar. We're not going to be able to pull this off. Amen. But I praise and thank God. You are here today. Give God some praise. <laughs> so as we move on, and our goal is to have you out, at least by, since you all, we started about almost 30 minutes behind today, but my goal today is to truly have you out no later than 3.30. I want to be a keeper of God's word. We just thank you all for the morning fellowship, so it's, we're going to skip over some of your little breaks, amen. So just breathe. Amen. We thank God for the air. At this time, our first icebreaker. Can I get this back over, Leggy? Can you bring this back over the podium to me? Real quick. Thank you. Inside of your folders, if any of you have taken out the time to look at your conference folder, there's a lot of good things inside. We're going to ask you, there is a card, a blank card, that is in your folder. Your task for our first icebreaker will be to pull out your card, get your pen out. We have 10 things. So this calls for listening. You know a lot of times somebody's talking and you really just, just don't hear them. So we give them different little components and tests at school, amen. And we found out with our adults, it's just as worse. Come on, women, and shout, woo, woo, amen. So, I didn't do the little map. I wanted to do something totally different this time. So on your card, you're going to go around, and I'm gonna need everyone to get their pen, and on the red line, which is the top, every one of us in here are going to write, you to the Andre. Do you know someone who? If you don't have a card in your folder, you don't have a pen in your folder. See, Sister Valencia is right there for you. Okay, can we go get some cards built right back from here? It's in the basket, Sister Valencia got that. Let's see how well we pay time to, so. On the red line you have written, do you know somebody who? Is everybody there yet? The red line is on the card, the top of the, of the card. It's a red line. No, I need the cards though. We have 100 cards, honey. You look in the basket there, and it should be in the basket. Are we all there now? Yeah. Oh. You'll need the card for something else too, another card. So for this segment, <clears throat> yes ma'am. Another card and pin. Sound booth, we good? Everybody got their card, pin? 
Get your package. That was a labor of love, trust me. Eight o'clock last night, finishing up. All right, here we go. Yes, you got yours, you ready? Top line says, Bishop, you too now. Do you know somebody who? You will take the question. You have to get a signature, just not the signature, just the initials for these 10 things. Whoever has theirs, theirs filled in 10, five, less than 10 minutes, will get a prize. What do you say, minister? Amen. So you're going to have to get up, move around, find out who's who. I will repeat the question. You will stop. Then you will go. All right, let's stand to our feet. Woo! Kind of y'all. Y'all have never did a workshop with me. Come on. Amen. I went to a, a place where they had the people hopping on the foot for a gift. I said, I don't think so. So I won't do that. <laughs> but I want us to have fun. All right. The first, do you know somebody who? Number one, sow. Someone that sows. Make clothes or make up clothes. Someone that makes garments. Anybody in here? Look around. Go ask them. You, you will never know till you go ask them. Oh. Uh, that doesn't mean the ones that come with the needle thread already ready for you. <laughs> Who sold? Somebody got. Who sold? Did y'all find somebody that sold? Who sold? Who you got? Who sold? Who sold? I can't do it. Just one for now. Yeah, you get initial. Get somebody initial it for you. Second one. Second one. Stop. Red like we like. Gotta stop. Second one. Somebody that know how to cook gumbo. 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 <laughs> Who know how to cook gumbo? I'll give you my initial. Where's yours? No, 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 this is number two. Wait a minute, don't. You gotta get number one. I do, I so. Why do you think I'm the only one that do gumbo? Oh my God, look at you. Huh? Sure. But if you fuck, I'll be happy. Okay. That's two. Yes? Okay, where's your one? You didn't you find nobody that sold no I don't see an issue. Who, who, oh, she did, so that was your one. And now this is your number two. Yes. That's your issue. And that's your gumbos. Your bishop might do something. Freeze. Freeze. Number three. Loves shopping. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 do -do -do do -do 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 Four people, somebody's getting points. Do 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 do. Stop. Freeze. There's a secret. Some of you only got one person. I know there's another person in here that does that. Number four. Have been overseas. I don't even been overseas. You talk about your business. Hey, exactly, exactly. Talk about it. Talk about it. There's other people in here. I warn you. Bishop. 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 Are you 
Stop! Freeze! Freeze! Have only boys. Do 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 I should not be the only one with boys. You can have all boy, all boys. What number is it? Number six? Five. Five. Do boys only? Boys only. Do 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 Look at that. Look at that. Do I church? I'm cheating here. Okay, here you go. Do stuff. I had to do it. I had to obey. Oh, look at the bishop and the mother, you all. That's terrible. All right. Oh, my God. Look at this. All right. You ready for the next one? Number six. Girls only. Girls only. No. Really? Oh, this is terrible. We got to pray. The next generation, y'all bring some girls in this world. Wow. Okay. Uh, we're mixed to rose. In that spot there, let's scratch that one since we don't have girls. Have more than four kids. Do you do? Huh? No. Mm -mm. Have more than four kids. Four. I only got four. Four or more. Four or more. Do do do. Do do do. Do do do. Which one? Which one? Six. Do. Huh? Who? In the marriage, it doesn't matter. Four or more. Which one I supposed to sign? Oh, no, that's the right one. Okay. All right. Do do do. I got four. Four or more. Do, 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 freeze. Please, please. I'm alive. Who there was in there? Who there? I was fro I'm frozen in time. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, my. All right. Number seven. No, the devil is alive with that one. Number seven. Bakes, cakes, and pies. I can't sign for you. Sorry. That's not my thing. That's why God made bakeries. That's why I made people like You'll find out who bakes now. I don't, I'm not that good. I ain't tell nobody. I don't really bake. Uh-uh. See, Nicole and Valencia, they do all my baking in my house for the holiday. Nicole and Valencia. Mr. Rose, number seven. Pammy? I'm learning a lot of 
about your shopaholics and shoeholic people. I, you got over. Y'all, she has over, I can guarantee you, way over 25 beer. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Free. All right. Freeze. Number nine drives a silver car. Number one. Who so? Stand to your feet and tell us who, who you have. Who else sows? Oh, okay, yes, three sows. Look at these sows. Y'all need them. We're going to need them. I knew it. That's what I want to pull out your strengths, women. Come on. Woo. All right, so who has two or who has three? Who, who's the sow? Okay, so, so so always raise your hand. So always raise your hand. It's okay. We 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 it's one, two, three, so always get their names. It's a plot to everything that I do for kingdom work. All right. So Sister Valencia, Minister Pam got something for you. Come on down. Y'all clap your hands. Woo! All right. Who has the most for gumbo? Stand to your feet. Tell us how many people you have. Only two. Is anything more than two? Two gumbos. Who got? Oh, somebody got four gumbos. Do I get another one? She has three gumbos. I think number four has one again. Oh my God. We're going to give her something else. All right. So Valencia is in the lead. You got that? Do you write it down. 
Who's the gumbo people? Gumbo people, raise your hand like you just don't care. Come on, stand to your feet, gumbo people, because I see a gumbo party happening. Oh, I see a Friday night gumbo. Y'all ain't shut. Wait them towels like you just don't care. Woo! All right, so y'all see these gumbo. All I say to hospitality committee leaders, get those people. You got a party on your way. All right, so whoever has the... <laughs> Double blessing. All right. So who's our gumbo winner? Who had the most on the gumbo? Valencia. So give her just two points. We're gonna hook her up. Number three. Ready? Oh, you see. Loves shopping. How many? Y'all should have got her on that show. You got three. Only three, anybody that's got more than three. Three out of three is here. Yo, I cannot believe this. Did y'all see the way this woman dropped? Our uh, Pastor Burrell? She's always shopping. Can you not see Sister Gloria? She's always shopping. I try to take off an outfit off of her. Anybody else? Anybody else? There it is. Put your hand together. Make some noise for our Sister Pat. Woo. All right. All the way down, coming to four. Have been overseas. I got two. I got four. You got four? You got two, anybody else? Okay, four. Who said four? Valencia, we got something for you. Put it down. Oh, she got, you got four. Come on, Sister Gloria, wave the door. Woo! All right. <laughs> got boys only. Go on shot like you just don't care. This, y'all gotta get some boys. Bishop, you gotta, you know, we got to go and pray about this now. We need men. Okay. All right, so seeing that y'all, how many of y'all have more than two boys at least? Oh, one boy? Wow, you see that? That's what we got to pray for the nation. Amen. That don't count. You got two boys? Okay, two. Let's hear from Sister Pam. Did you get something already? We'll just give her a checkpoint. Woo, we waved that towel. All right. Then number six went to no four or more kids. Who had four or more kids? Okay, two. I see. A, uh oh, back to what you got? What you? Three signatures. Three signatures. Did you get a bag already? All right. Well, come on down. Call the cup. All the way from Easter. You go. You go. Longer they ain't all your four. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Number seven. Pay attention. Oh, let's give her bag too. Come on, let's give sister bag. Raise those towels. <laughs> Number seven. Bakes, cakes, and pies. Three. I hear. Oh, I hear number five in the audience. Woo! Five. That's she got eight. Oh, Sister Gloria, you go. Y'all give God some praise for that. Now, now the eight people that she got, y'all stand to your feet. Look, look at this. Good looking. I see, oh my God, big old. Oh God, we're gonna have good dinners. Oh, we're gonna make a lot of fundraisers. Do you see this, Dad? Yes, I think my bitch is giving me a high five on that one. Woo! Amen. Wow. <laughs> All right, nine. Drives a silver car. Three. Three. Y'all forgot Mr. Adam got a silver car too. Three. Two. Two. Three. Uh, oh, I skipped one. I'm sorry. Number eight. Over 25 pairs of shoes. I I got five. I got five. So give them checks. We got some coming later for them. Give them they checked. Because they already received. So can I can I just kind of know who your five were? I'm, I'm I'm CA. Okay, stand up. Uh, that's how we do it. Those of you that have over um 25 pairs of shoes, stand up. Look at them. Look at these shopper hawks, shoe haulings. That's what we got to pray for right there. 
What's your, look, I, I ask your lady what your shoe size is. Yeah, yeah, I ask you your size is lady. I, I got you. All uh, right, you seen that, right? All right. There was a special request for size nine. Oh, anybody say size nine? Nine, 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 nine. Uh, nine, nine, nine. Okay, we need to pay a nine, nine, nine. All right, there we go. Then nine, nine. So if you don't have any shoes, did y'all hear the clarion call from our Minister Rose? All right, I think that deserves a towel wave, y'all, on the shoes. Woo! Just, I just, as, as, uh, since uh, Minister Glad knows, I'm just saying, saying all right, I'm just saying, all right, number nine, three, for that silver card, three, 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 all right, I think Leggy got this one on y'all, come on, Leggy, get that job, Leggy, come on, Leggy, come on, the Legacy, go get your basket, hey, man, last one, this one was really hard. We had to think about that one. Hmm. Drives a Jeep. We're going to have to have a year we bless the men and the men, you know, we're going to try a, what is it, a CCC. Everybody got one where the pastor and his ministerial staff all had to buy um, uh, motorcycles. So I think we're going to have to get Jeeps after a while. So we got one. So guess what? Bishop, come on down. Alone. Amen. That's our first round. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Yeah. All right, family, it's over to you. And only a couple people sew. We need a sewing class, Pastor. We need a sewing class. And I don't cook, so don't even ask me to cook, so I don't cook. Don't cook. My mama cooks. I only cook Mexican food. That's it. So, Mexican food. Amen. 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 My mom was a good cook, though. Now we're going to have our first workshop, okay. True Colors, by Minister Nika. She's about to give us like 45 minutes or so um, on True Colors, amen? Let's give her a hand clap. Amen, everyone. Amen. 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 Well, true colors. Has anyone ever taken a personality test? Yes. Raise your hand. Woo! Oh, that's everybody. If I have, I don't know. All right. If you have, you don't remember. But today you shall. Today you shall. True colors is simply a way of identifying yourself and others based upon a spectrum of colors. And in no particular order, each of you have been given four colors. Blue, orange, yellow, and green. No particular color. What I want you to do at this moment is to place your favorite color first to your least favorite color. Place them in the order that you like those colors. The very first one will be your personal preference, your next preference, your next preference, and then your last preference. You should have one of each.
If you don't like any, then that tells me about your personality. <laughs> Bishop got jokes. He don't like no colors. Bishop, if you put them all together, they'll turn white. Pure as snow. They might even turn gold. So you can walk your way up to heaven. But for this challenge, your most favorite to your least. Everyone has their colors? Amen. All right. What I want you to do is hold up your very first favorite color. And I see, let me see. How many have green? Everybody else put it down. How many people have green as their very first favorite color? Three. Four. Four. There you go. All right, Miss Rose, I got you in the back. So we have four whose first color is green. How many people's first color was yellow? Yellow. First color was yellow. One, two, two. two. Yeah. All right. How many people, their first favorite color was orange? Orange. One. I'm still waiting on you, Bishop. I'm still waiting on you. Your first favorite color is blue. How many people do I have, amen, for blue? One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at blue. Y'all that green for money. Y'all ain't slick. Amen. Look at that. Look at that. Now, I did that for a particular reason. Because as we go through true colors, I'm going to give you all a few minutes to take a fun exam, a test, a pop quiz. There is no right or wrong answer. It's simply based on you. Who knows you better than you? God does, but upon this earth, who knows you better than you? No one else but you. You're right. No one else but you. So what I'm going to do is take a moment and show you yourself. We would normally say in black and white, but how many times do we have black and white in our lives? Papers, products, all the time. So and that's right. So what I did was we went and we made it in color so it would stand out. All right. Let's see. Desiree, will you do me a favor, dear? Will you pass one of these out to everyone with whom can read and write? With whom can read and write? And while she's doing that, I'm going to go through and describe the directions. It's real quick and simple. Four or five little boxes. And then you group them on the back and total them on the back. So it says, describe yourself. In the boxes below are groups of word clusters printed horizontally in rows. Look at all the choices in the first box. A, B, C, and D. Read the words and describe which of the four letter choices is most like you. Remember, this is all about you. No one else but you. Give that a four. Then rank order the next three choices from there. So it would be three, two, and one in that row. Whatever's most like you is a number four in each row. And then from there to one. You will end up with a row of four letter choices, ranked four, most like you, to one, least like you. Continue this process with the remaining four rows until you end with five horizontal rows that each have a four, three, two, and one. And on the back side, we will total them accordingly. And I'll tell you how to get there from there. I'll give you a few moments.
Are you special? Glory be to God. After you have ranked all five of the rows in orders four, three, two, one, that is most like you to least like you. On the back side, you will then follow the corresponding groups and letters and place those numbers from the first page in those numbers. So whatever you have for A, whether it's a four, three, two, or one, on the back side, you look for A under the first group and you put whatever that number is. For B, whatever you have, you look for B in whichever group, one, two, three, or four, and you put that number in there. And you do that for each letter. I'm sorry? No, we're going to do one let, one number at a time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whichever of well, those group of words. Absolutely. 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 It's just based on you. What does vivacious mean? Full of spunk, full of adornments, full of sassy kind of a thing. Yes, ma'am. Long, ladies. How many of us and gent? How many of us have our totals? All right, all right. I'm, I'm giving some time. I'm giving some time. I'm giving some time.
need a little bit more time. Okay. All right. right how many of us have our totals now very good very good I'm going to start having Mr. DeAndre will you come and pass out a packet just one to everyone who can read and comprehend and who has completed their questionnaire <laughs> Don't go through them just yet. Just want you to get them. Thank you, son. All right, we're gonna proceed with the next step. What you have recently been passed out is a packet of true colors. The yellow is gonna represent our gold. We have green, we have blue, and we have orange. And on one side, it tells you what the color is and how that person thinks. So for example, gold, which is represented in this yellow, that person is conventional, structured, orderly, traditional. They're gold. If you turn it over, green, that person is conceptual. They're independent, they're individualized, they're intellectually challenging, and they're thought-provoking. They're green. Blue. That person is interactive, open, cooperative, warm, and informal. 
and orange. That person is courageous. They're active, they're informer, informal, they're unstructured, they're fun, they're spontaneous, they're vivacious. That's orange. And on the back of each one of those, I've given you the definition or the overview of what each person is so that you can know how and when to respond to that person. Now, each picture is also represented by a character card that's on there. That's the little card in the center underneath what that person is and a brief little overview and the color. How many people now think that they are a different color than what they chose originally? Taking a moment to look at all four of these. How many people think that there's something different? Okay, one person thinks that there's something different. From your favorite color? Yeah, from your favorite color. Remember in the opening, I said, what's your favorite color? Put it in most to least. Okay. Yeah, I'm not asking you to change your favorite color. Absolutely, absolutely, that's gonna be the point. That's gonna be a point right there. Your favorite color can imply or embark something greater than you, something different than you, but it may not be who you are innately. You might be something else innately or something else that you think you are. But looking at the write-up for each one of these, gold, green, blue, orange, who sees something different? How many people agree that they're blue? Okay, let's raise our hands. Okay, raise your hands up high so I can see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we have some more people, okay, that are blue. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many people say they're more like green? Now, one, two, three, four. They're more like green now. After, after they've read the overview, one, one, two, three, four. We're still at four. Are you asking who changed your mind? Yes. You were already green? Did you change your mind? Anybody change their mind? You changed your mind? You're more like green now? Yes. One. Who's more like yellow? Who's more like yellow or the gold? Very structured, very organized, very matter of a fact. Who's more like gold? One, two, three. They're more like gold. Who's more like orange? Outgoing, vivacious, no structure, spontaneous. All right. I'd like to raise my hand yes. on all of them because I am some of all of them. A absolutely. We are some of all of them. There's no right or wrong. Each one of these colors, each one of these colors is you innately. Some are gonna come out stronger than others, depending on the situation, the circumstance, or who you're even dealing with at that point in time. We're gonna respond differently, per se, ladies, in ministry than we might at the house. We will, we will respond differently at work than we will in the ministry or at the house. We might respond differently on volunteer time than on paid time. All of these are you. It's just gonna be a determination as to what's gonna be more strengthened at that time that you're dealing with whomever, wherever. You're gonna possess different attributes. We are all on the spectrum. Some are just gonna be a little bit more greater than others at different points in times. So we all are. Now what I'm gonna ask you to do, yes ma'am.
<laughs> what I'm going to ask you to do is just take a moment and look around. When we look around, we see so many different people. We come from various backgrounds, various walks of life, various circumstances and situations. But we're all here for a common cause, a common goal, whether it be in ministry, whether it be at the home, whether it be on your employment, or a combination of all. We represent ourselves differently each and every time. Now we have to look at when are we the most consistent? Depends. Some people are morning people. How many people are morning people? They get more things done between oh dark 30 and 9 a.m. than most people that are still asleep. I'm a morning person. How many people are not morning people? They'll get more things accomplished from about noon to the wee hours. That is not me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we always look for people that can compliment us. I know that I like to go to bed at a particular time, 8 o'clock, because I start my day about 5, 5, 8, 5 30 in the morning. But lately I've been up in the wee with a few other people, getting things accomplished, getting things done. Why? Because it's that still time. It is that quiet time. Our phones are not ringing. Nobody should be on the internet sending emails, receiving emails. <laughs> It's one thing to respond, but most people are, you're not gonna be getting bombarded as you would during the regular course of the day. Let's say between 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and perhaps five or six o'clock in the evening. So you get more things done at particular peaks and points in time. That's when the most productive you comes out. That's when the most productive you is around. When everybody else is doing what they're supposed to do, whether they're asleep or whether they're out and about. Well, with true colors, each color is very reflective of your personality. It's going to help you to identify the primary color and your second, third, and fourth dairy colors. Yes. Yes. You could. Yes. But with that being said, those were not the colors that was chosen for the personality test. So the colors that are chosen for the personality test are the ones that we're going to discuss today. The true colors is, a, is valuable for improving your effectiveness and working with others in whatever state you're in. We've now ranked ourselves on the assessment. We've looked at what's going to be, what could be, so forth and so on. Do you want to know where you stand on that spectrum? Think so too. <clears throat> Son, do me a favor. Pass this one out for me, please. Okay. Same test, different words. I want you to do that one. <laughs> Just one page. It's quicker than the last one. It's easier than the last one. The words are easier. I wasn't going to give you the, I gave you the most challenging words first. The words are easier. <laughs> You're going to see yourself in just in a moment. Yes, same thing. We're just going to look in each one of the boxes and score them up. Yes. Yes, at the very bottom, where it says total, and it tells you what letters to use. 
that's going to score that particular color on the spectrum. So A, H, K, N, S, that's going to score your orange. D, E, L, P, Q, that's going to score your green. C, F, J, O, R, that will score your blue. And B, G, I, M, T will score your gold. You're going to still rank it 4, 3, 2, 1 from most favorite to least favorite. Look at the group of words and see if it's more like you to least like you. How many of us are still scoring or considering? Okay. All right. Done? Okay, how many are done? And they're just kind of going through some things. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give a few more moments so we can get scored up.
All right. Looking at the total score, how many people's total score for orange was pretty high? That was their first one. How many people, that was their number one, orange. Yes, was that your top score, orange? The largest number. All right. Raise your hand again, I'm sorry. Let me count how many people for orange. One, two, three, four. How many people's number one score was green? One, two, three. Their number one score was blue. Oh, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. I put five just because my baby right here, even though that's blue, has been consistent. I took her down. Yes. Yes. How many people's number one score was gold? Gold. One, two. Now, how many people their top score, their second highest was those colors? Your second highest? What if we had multiple colors for our second highest? Was it plus or minus one to three difference in range? No, they have both the exact same number. That's fine. That's fine. What's yours? Uh, my second highest? Yes. Orange and green. What, so orange and green are your second highest? Both your first green. is blue, mm -hmm. and then orange and green. Okay. Yours? My green and blue. What was your first one? Orange. Orange, green and blue. Hmm. Uh, orange and gold. Orange and gold. What were, you, what were the numbers? Nine. Yes, for orange and gold. 17 and 17? Yeah. What was your next one after that? Um, that was 19. 19? Okay. Okay. What were your numbers? And green Okay. 18, 12, 12, and 8? Very good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I was, I had 19 and I had 3 15. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's unique. Okay, that's very complimentary. Very complimentary. Okay. Yes, sis. What was yours? Uh huh. Orange, blue, and gold. Uh huh. That's very much you. Uh huh. Eighteen was your top number. Okay. Bishop, what about you? Uh huh. Green and orange? All right. Yes. You're blue at 17? Very much so. And orange and 14? And then your green should have been, what, 10? And your gold is not, not at 9? Yes. I can't hear you. Speak. Orange is 18, gold is 15, blue is 10, green is 9. Yeah, that's you, definitely. Okay, what I did was I gave you the same test in two different versions. On the very first one, those are still the same words. Those are, these are just synonyms. They're just synonyms. It's still the same scoring, even, as far as the colors on the spectrum. What you do, if you look at the pink piece of paper and you look on the back, it's going to give you an overview or a brief general description of your colors on the spectrum. You're going to go in and out of these colors. Now, my lowest color is orange. My lowest color. I'm talking it's a single digit. Like three. Something like that. Yeah, three to five, something like that is my, is my orange. It's very low. 
Now, can I still have fun? Do I still like to have fun? Yes, but I want to know when the fun is coming. Yes. Because sometimes I have to get prepared for the fun. Yeah, I have to get my mind wrapped around it. But all of the other colors, they're all the same, or when I take it, it's one number difference. That's how consistent I am. Mm -hmm. My other numbers will always be very consistent, very strong, very high. But I operate in those skill sets every day with every one. So the longer that you operate in a particular spectrum, in a particular skill set, those are going to be strengthened at that time. They're also going to change and waver a little bit based on your friendships. Because I have certain friendships that I'm more of a one particular color than another. I have associations where I can be one particular color more than another. But because mine is so very much closely knitted, I'm pretty balanced and consistent. And I've taken this test one time too many. One time too many for different reasons, work related, et cetera, et cetera. And they look at it each time, I'll because I have my, my history, and I'll show them it's never different. It, it's very consistent. They're like, oh my god. You took this da da da, -da and, Oh my God, but your orange is very consistent and all your other colors are, yes. That just tells you how balanced a person is throughout their lifetime. Is, it, is, is there any wrong or right to it? No, not at all, not at all. It shows you your strengths and your weaknesses. Now here's the difference. We deal with people daily that have a particular strength and weakness. They may be complementary to yours and they may be non-complementary to yours. This is why we have to learn how to deal effectively with people. Son, will you pass out this green packet? This green. Make sure that everyone that you pass one out to earlier can get one. Okay. Now this green packet, I've given you some attributes of each color. Because I need you to know how to communicate with the people in your circles how to communicate effectively with the people in your lives, in your home, in ministry, in volunteerism, in your school, and wherever circles you have people that you are communicating in. These are gonna be some significant attributes and qualities on how to effectively communicate with them based on who you are. Once you know who you are, because we already know whose we are, we can then begin to communicate with others that are not like us. I enjoy having people around me that are orange. Yes. To a degree. <laughs> to a degree. I love it. Why? Because they bring the life out in me. They bring that untapped side out in me. They bring that side that's not always so easily to come out in me. And they allow me to have fun. And they stretch me out of my comfort zone sometimes. Well, that's what, that's what the person that has your complete opposite will do to you. For example, <clears throat> those that became a orange, who became very spontaneous, you all are very playful. You're risk takers. You test the limit sometimes. You're impulsive at times, but you're very creative. Those that are gold, you're very firm. You're very decisive. You're a good planner. You're very organized and meticulous. A lot of times they call you OCD. Think about it. And if you turn the page, those that are blue, the strongest on the spectrum, you're very passionate. You are a true romantic in every sense of the word. You're optimistic, and you're always trying to find the balance with people. You're mediating. What can I do to help you? How can I help to resolve this? Come on, y'all, let's get together and talk. It's all about feelings. All about feelings when you're blue. You're compassionate, you're spiritual, you're still creative and you're warm, but you are genuinely a caretaker. And those that are green as their strongest color, or one of their strongest colors, 
You always have the question, why? 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 You will why somebody to life. You can become very complex in nature. You're very much a perfectionist. It has to be done right and this way. But at the same time, you are standard setters. You will set a standard that others you will desire for them to excel in. You have to be right 98% of the time. <coughs> oh, I heard somebody say 98 and a half. You're very precise, but you're still creative. We use these as we go in and out in life. But if you look at the blue page, I've given you some tools to know how to speak to those people with those particular colors that are very complementary. For example, blue and green are complementary to each other. Orange and gold are complementary to each other. But they're also the opposites of those if they're on a diagonal. Blue is completely the opposite of gold, and green is completely the opposite of orange. So for example, the blues love to talk, and the greens ask too many questions. Doesn't mean they like to talk, they just ask questions. Your orange, they're just focused on results. They wanna get to the point and get there quickly and do it with fun and zeal. But the goals, they wanna have a checklist. They wanna make sure that every point from A to Z is covered. And you will see them make a check or cross it out. Make a check or cross it out. That's your goal. They want to know that everything has been covered. And as we wrap it up, if you turn to the very back page of that blue, I've shown you some tools that will help you to speak to those colors in your life. Those individuals whose colors are either the same as or the comparable as. So again, blue is comparable to green. Orange is comparable to gold, but they're also the opposite. And blue is opposite than gold, and green is opposite than orange. So for example, blue likes to avoid criticism and conflict. Green is gonna get right to the point. Blue wants to talk about your feelings and keeping your promises, where green wants to avoid talking about the feelings. Let's talk about the options and the possibilities. Orange, they're just gonna be honest. They're gonna cut to the heart of the problem. I don't have time for all the fluff. I will tell you in a minute, every so often, please drop the commentary. I do not have time for the extra commentary. Give me the meat and the potatoes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. And they complement each other. Yes. So what does that say? Because this does not green and blue. It does not complement green and blue, but that tells you who innately you are. You are a person that has spontaneity. You are a person that does not like to be necessarily boxed in, tied in, and then placed in a particular something because you need to fly like an eagle. You need to soar. You need to stretch your wings. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can't see the balance in it. It doesn't mean that you can't see the warm and fuzzy in it. You'll do all of that. And especially if it has some specific mandate. But you like to stay creative at the same time. You like to stay free at the same time. That's all that is. It's on the spectrum, it's there. And you'll operate in that favorite innate color of yours more often than you think as an underlying basis to whatever the other colors are on your spectrum. It's gonna be there. It's just, it's gonna come out more or less at certain times, in certain instances. Yes. If you have any other questions, we can place them on the parking lot and we can go there right after the conference. But I wanted to give you two different perspectives. That's why I gave you two different assessments. It's the same color scale. All right, amen.
Give God some praise. Come on, everybody. Amen. One thing about amen, what we are, are attempting, our goal is, is that as we educate ourselves, amen, we're trusting God for that increase. Amen. Come on again. That was an excellent one. I'm telling you, we have been at trainings where we did True Colors, and I'm telling you all, it was a whole day of True Colors. It's, it's all different segments. Amen. And we try to gear it towards the congregation of that setting. Amen. But it's just awareness that you can be aware of what you're dealing with and how to put on that whole armor of God. Amen. All right, it's that time. Come on, let me hear a roll. Get those toes. Come on and tell them hallelujah. Woo. Amen. At this time, amen. Before we move on to we're going to do minister numbers, she's going to do two, right? And then we're going to hear from the mighty man of God as a flame of fire, and we will bring you to the last segment last workshop amen and i guarantee you we'll be out of here amen are y'all excited yeah. i should give us some music and i want y'all to know our headquarters which is crossover christian center our women that we are trying to get them to are women in action. Amen? Amen? And we, the Christ Supernatural Temple of Deliverance women, we are called the elect women. Amen? And we are honored today, amen, to have before us our minister Rose, amen, that stood up, amen, and said, yes, Lord, I will proceed in the chair for our women of CCC. Y'all give God some praise. It's not like she really had a choice. I want you to know that. And uh, to our minister, Pam, amen. They're not really giving choices, amen. We are just walking in obedience, amen. Our bishop asks us to do. The apostle asks you to do, amen. And God help you if mother get on you. Y'all say amen. Amen. We love our mother, Ruth. Y'all give God some praise for our mother, Ruth. Amen. She flames the fire, amen, on every church that's here, amen. And we thank God for it. At this time, we turn you all over to these young ladies. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Your first member will be two, one. Hey! Oh, wow. <laughs> two, one. The next number is two. Oh, boy. Oh, I got my grandchild. <laughs> 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 the next number is. <laughs> Can I get a little washboard action here? <laughs> The next number is one more. Number nine. Going once, going twice. Woo! All over. The next number is. Next number is. Drum roll, please. One zero, number ten. Oh, oh, no. oh, you know, really? <laughs> more right the next yeah, number is <laughs> the, uh, number three. Hey. Hey. Okay, we can do one more. We can do one more. 
the next number is. At this time, before we go to the next one, we're going to hear a flame of fire, amen, from our honorable. Will you rise to your feet and let's receive our bishop, Frederick Graham! Well, I see the men got some work to do. We, uh, and, and, and we know that. And, uh, you know, I just want to just take a, just a few minutes before I get out of here. I, I really got to go. And uh, I just want to just say thank you, first of all, to uh, Apostle Adam for accepting the charge to, you know, to put this together. Because, you know, putting something, anything together is a challenge. Because any time that it requires support other than yourself, it's a challenge. And any time you're trying to get people to do things, it's definitely a challenge. But uh, it takes a special person to... Uh, lead anything and anything that you go into uh you know you got to put your heart into it and uh i know that apostle every time she does something or asks her to do something uh, she's always come forth i tell you she normally have about 10 or 15 things going at the same time she got that bag right there full of stuff and uh you know we 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 working on trying to trim that bag down to maybe something compact and things but <laughs> but we working on it and i'll i'll just really say that, uh, you know, give yourself a hand for just showing up today. I tell you because, you know, when you, when you look outside there and you see that sunshine out there, you say, man, you start thinking of all kinds of things you can be doing, but you know, it takes a commitment to show up here today. And it says a lot about who you are. And I thank God for you all. And uh, I really uh, see great things happening. And uh, one thing I'll say is that uh, when you are given a task to put anything together, you know, understand this that everybody's not going to be a part of it even though we might want them to be but that's a process in itself it's called relationship building and as you begin to build relationship with people and things like they get to know you and all of a sudden you can move them to the next level but you won't be able to move them until you do that some people are a lot easier than others and some are more difficult than others but it doesn't make them you know a bad person that just means you got work to do. And believe it or not, it's those challenging people is what make you who you are or who you're not. And we look at it negative, but it should be a positive. And unless you are a builder, you know, something like this just drives you crazy. And I tell you, I know that I'm a builder because, you know, I, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Because I can look out there and see it empty and still come in here and preach and do everything that I do at the school. That shouldn't be any distinction. But a lot of people are not like that, and that's okay. That just lets you know where they are, and it's okay to be that way. But you gotta have a vision for where you're going. As long as you got a vision, and your vision is pointing you to God and things that you always be successful. Now understand this, you're gonna fall, you're gonna struggle, you're gonna run into roadblocks and barriers and things, but you better get up. And I tell people, don't start and then you ain't planning to finish. Because people look at us as being great starters, but we, very seldom finish anything that we start. And that, I tie that back to what we call a vision. A vision gives you purpose and direction, and without the fuel, you're not gonna make it anyway. So if God gives you some, make a commitment to go all the way. Like he says, count the cost. There's a cost and there's a price to pay for success. There's a price to pay for failure. You choose the route. And if it's me, I'm gonna take the other route. Because I know with God and myself, we always win. And if God is not in it, I know my chances of winning is very slim. So know this. This is the first step and the first stage in building this conference. And you know, our goal and objective as we sit down and do some, uh, what we call an AAR in the military, after action review. You sit down and ask yourself, okay, what went good, what went bad? 
and then get ready for the next one. I envision these starting every quarter, every quarter, because we have to do something in this community to reach our women. They're not just going to come anyway. And I envision women outside of our church coming here. That's the great sign right there because I don't want to just do everything with the people of Crossover, of Christ Supernatural Tent, or either Evangel, or even our Hispanic ministry. I want to be able to reach out and touch other ministers out there. And that says a lot about who you are. You got to be able to get outside of your element, outside of your zone, because a lot of time we get so comfortable where we are to, we just overlook everyone else. But I'm telling you, if you're going to, make an impact in this city and this nation. You're going to step outside the box. Amen? So give yourself a hand for just even showing up today and give yourself another hand for having these quality speakers to come forth. And if you've never spoken or was called on to speak about anything, you probably don't know what goes into preparing anything. But I tell you, if you are God-elect, I said if, you have to finish that and say I am, but there's some qualities that you have to live up to fulfill that. So don't be afraid if you're not where you need to be, just find out where you need to be and put together a plan to get there. Because none of us haven't arrived yet. I think I heard that either tonight or last night, but I'm telling you, until then, there's work to do. That's a lot of work to do. So I thank God for you, I appreciate you, and I'll tell you, this card here is gonna be very helpful to me about do you know someone who? It's going to stay inside my Bible, so when I need something, I know who to call on. <laughs> I don't need to ask you, do you, can you, will you? I got it right here. Praise the Lord. So if I need a pie or something like that, I know who to call. Amen. So praise the Lord. So you guys have a great day. I really enjoyed myself and, uh, you know, just know that uh, I'm always behind you. And things, and there might be times where I can't be where you are, but just know that I'm praying for you. My heart is there, and you know, keep me lifted up there. And things, you know, the challenges that I have before me, and things like that. But I know if I keep my eyes on Him, I'll always be successful. Amen. God bless you guys. You guys have a great day. Amen. Amen. Well, again, we say the parking lot is available, and we're going to ask, um, come, uh, Nicole. The parking lot is scheduled for if we had any questions for any workshop or anything that's been done, that in your folders, you can take your yellow sticky, write your question, so we can answer it at the appropriate time. Amen. There is never a question that's silly. Amen. So if you just write your question on the parking lot area, we will do it. If you have any comments for the good of the order, also place them, and you will see it in our next bulletin, especially when we print it out. Love you and thank you. Moving right along. Real quick question for you. We only have two to do this in. All right. Did God... Use a rib to create Eve. Yes. 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 If you're sure about that, yes. Tell me where it's found. It's in the book of Genesis. What chapter? Quick. Chapter one. Stand up quick. You can win. You can win. Somebody already said it. Mm -mm. Two. Well, two and what then? You can get there. Two what? Two and ten. Ah. Ah. Somebody go quickly. Genesis 2, 21. Read, please. Put the board so we can put our stickers on. Read. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and stead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made all right. Amen. All right. Amen. Woo. All right. So we're gonna Woo. ask. I want something. Yes. I go want get something. You go. Woo. Go wave the towel for. Woo.
I'm yes. getting ready to answer that question for you. What did you pee? <laughs> that was the Holy Ghost. Great minds think alike. Mother has the question. The myth has suggested that men have one less rib because God took one of Adam's rib to create a woman. However, that is a myth. Both man and woman have the same number of ribs. It could be possible that Adam had one less rib than others who were born into the world after him. Okay? Amen. We will know that. Amen. However, when Cain, the first male child, was born, he was born with what kind of rib? Well, can answer that? Somebody says spirit. What kind of rib? Me? What kind of rib? Me? What kind of rib? Inverted. Inverted. That's what I'm telling you. Come on. No rib. Extra rib. Is that all your answer? Oh, no, I didn't. Regular ribs. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Final answer. Inverted. I inverted. Two. The right amount. It's a normal amount. Did you say? Did you say the normal amount? That is the correct answer. Y'all give God. But you, it's the we said I didn't hear you, and you didn't stay a minister, so it was the normal ribs, and that's really important. We have to know the difference between what is mythical and what is biblical principles. Amen. So those are my two questions. Thank you all so much. Amen. Real quick, just for the fun, as we give away gifts. Amen. Uh, somebody quickly. How many books of the Bible are there? Sixty-six. How many? Sixty-six. You stood. You can get uh, write her down so we can give her something when we get over to the other thing. Okay, that's all right. How many books of the Old Testament? Stand on your feet. You gotta stand on your feet. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. You shut down. Get somebody. Somebody that know. Oh, that, that, that's not good. No guessing. No guessing. No guessing. I used to know this. You used to know this. Yeah. You had some shirt, right? How many books? Oh, y'all start now. I know we need to be in Sunday school in your Bible training classes. Come on here. Some of y'all look. I'm going to make you accountant. Then maybe I'll make it easier on you. How many books are there in the New Testament? He's close, but no. Don't laugh. There's no answer. What does that tell us, people, women of God? No. And Christ, y'all, some of y'all, ooh, I, I just can't wait because I know now I'm making it mandatory for Sunday school. Ooh. But I teach these things in our Bible class. 27. I'm not happy because we can all subtract and add, I hope. So if there's 66 books of the Bible, 27 are new. 39. Thank you, Desiree. 39 in the Old Testament. Should we even get it? No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Praise the Lord. But those are some of the things I tell y'all as believers that get us out on the street with y'all when we're trying to witness them. When we are truly trying to witness, isn't it something when we that's in the house of God in order for us to get out of our gates? Come on, somebody. You knocking on somebody's door. Come on, tell them, come on and see who Jesus. They're gonna actually show me in the word. Show me in the word. So I'm asking you to really take time out in your folders. We have some wonderful, can someone in each row, I'm going to ask, amen, on this blue sheet, the compound names of God, amen. Uh -oh. Lorraine, give me one from off the first row that you know that you might have used. Uh, oh, oh, no. Give me one. I haven't got you yet. Uh, what did she Jehovah, say? Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh? Our provider. Our provider. Y'all give God some praise? Yeah. All right. 
On this side of the house, give me one. Jehovah Elohim. What does it mean? The Lord, the eternal creator. Everybody see what that is? Six, seven down. All right, can I get another one? Jehovah, and you know what Jehovah Shiloh, what does it mean? The Lord is my peace. The Lord is my peace. And you know what's so wonderful about that one? It's because we listen to different music and that's some of y'all, that's the only one y'all know. That there's a there's a song that we sing. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi. And those are the only ones we know because of the music. Make your own song to these. Because we love the Lord that much, it is that important that we know the names. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. So I'm asking you, please take the time out. We have the scriptures right there for you. Amen. Amen. That's a good one, isn't it? Yes. And you know what? Just like when we were in school, we learned A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's what you need to do to D. Amen. Oh, yeah. Sit up, baby girl. All right, prayer God, real quick, look at it. What I love about this one, it is just, um, it is just, and we just went over these names, and I'm telling you, the benefits, the names, and the meaning helps you to understand how to pray. And those of you, amen, most of us in here, we are celebrating Pentecost at any cost, 50 days, amen, that we are calling out unto God in our prayers. And we're going to ask you, if you have any special prayer requests, there's another card in your folder. Please get it out. Put your first name, your last name. And before you leave, amen, there will be a basket back over in our second fellowship hall that you can drop your prayer requests. And I'm telling you, by the 27th of May, which is our 50th day, we're going to believe God and the report of the Lord. Amen. And I tell you, if you stand with us, amen, he said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So again, please take out this time that in your prayer uh, closet. Then again, on purple paper, you have the intercessor's prayer. Now I'm going to tell you, this is an excellent lesson. So take the time out to understand what intercessory prayer is about. And it's real simple. Don't make it complex now. Just as, and we're dealing with the upper room experience for these 50 days. Amen. If it was that simple that when Jesus descended, come on somebody. Amen. We, everybody be speaking in their own na natural native language. Amen. But he told us to tarry till it comes. Amen. So the 50 days, they love that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta come, gotta come, gotta come. I'm going on the Honda, amen? So whatever it is that you need to do for your 50 days, amen, till you get your breakthrough. Some of you have different gifts, which is wonderful. Oh, I got the gift of discernment. That's wonderful. But now let's ask God for the gift of the tongue. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That is the evidence. Come on, somebody. Amen. My mama was 50 years old. She said, I'm, gonna be, I'm born a Baptist. I'm going to die a Baptist. And we laughed at her at the age of 57. Tongue talking, uh, stomping, amen. Amen. Full of the Holy Ghost. Say, I love the Thank you, Jesus. So, Amen. it's the key to it is prayer. Amen. Anything that we need to do. Some of you need to move. Some of you need to move to different jobs. Some of you need a level. Amen. The enemy tried to got one foot holding that poverty. And guess what? We said, take the shackles off. Thank you. I love the Oh, I feel like him church. Then we have a good old prayer journal. How many, I'm telling you, he said, write the vision. You make that plain, amen. And what I like about this particular prayer journal, we have this in our leadership class, which I offer unto you on Tuesdays, amen. We're here, 6 to 6.30 in prayer. And you know what I love about it? Then Pastor Burrell's group come in, amen, and they have another good prayer, amen. So if you come into this place, Amen. You're going to feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. Y'all give God some praise. Amen. So take time. Don't let the enemy try to stress you out. Begin to start writing these things down. Amen. And just give them unto the Lord. Amen. Make yourself some copies. The virtuous woman, which is our, our, our faith. You, listen. 
Y'all can put this in the frame. Do you hear me? We have two parts. Put it in the frame. Look at it every day. You can even put it in your bathroom. And you say, go girl. You're looking in the mirror and you're talking to the Holy Ghost. And you say, go girl. We can. I am a virtuous woman. For my price is above rubies. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The heart of her husband. Ooh, sha. The safely trust in her. So that he shall have no need of spoil. Let me tell you something. Become that virtuous woman. Do you hear me? And if God will, amen, he will provide every need for us, amen, while we're here on this earth. Amen. The meaning of the 23rd Psalms is another one I'm telling you all. I love it. I thank God this is, amen, one of the shackle busters uh, breakdown of poems and different things. And this is our Dr. Patricia Lott, amen, that shared this with us. And I'm telling you, when you look at it, think about it. The Lord is my shepherd. That's your relationship. Uh, many of us, we talked about when you were children, you had a different relationship. Uh, when you said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want Remember, because that's the way we were taught, right? But now when you got grown and you start really going through some things, amen, you, hey, you a little different now. You said the Lord is. You done took some ownership to that. Amen. I shall not want, meaning I know that he's going to supply every need according to his riches. He maketh me to lie down in my green pasture. That means that every one of us will do some kind of rest. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He leads me beside the still waters. Uh, and all of today, I'm getting some refreshment. Y'all ain't saying nothing for his name's sake because he got divine purpose for every one of us. Y'all ain't saying that. He said, yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Uh, I smite test. Uh, you're being tested. You're being tested. How many of us will pass that test? And I'm telling I can preach this thing here. Oh my. I'm talking about my cup running over. That's the abundance and blessings of God. And Minister Rose, he says, surely our goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our life. That's our security. And he said, forever means what, everybody? Forever. Everybody what? Eternity. Amen. And so you see, that's not my job. That's another one. Get your exercise on. I'm telling you, women here, get your circle. Call somebody up. I'm going to call Pastor Burrell and say. We bought some. We bought some of the hurt on ourselves while other hurts were forced upon us. Is that something to think about? We are walking wounded, externally fulfilling our responsibilities while bleeding internally from unresolved issues. So we turn to Job and then that'll be in your reading time, amen. These things, this is a part of life, yo. This is what being a real woman of God is all about. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of at the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, Genesis 1, 2. God took a chaotic, meaningless earth and created an orderly, peaceful world that was overflowing with meaning. God wants to bring order out of the chaos that you have been living in. Amen. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. We refer to Daniel, amen, of these experiences of life. When we were thrown into the fires of negative experience, everything about our lives might be affected, but God can preserve us whole and complete. All right? Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel 3.22. 
Amen. And so we refer to these little stories, amen, that you may recognize who you are as a woman. Sometimes you think this is the end of the world. I got news for you, amen. There were those that were before us that did just as even greater, went through even more, and it makes us sometimes close our mouth and think, it's not bad after all, amen. amen. If we want to be healed and delivered, we have to recognize that God is with us and the fire of our negative experience and understand that we is always present. He is always present. Nothing is beyond God's power to heal or deliver. Come on and shout amen. amen. And real quick for your listening, Hebrews 4, write it down, 12 and 13, read verse for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the, of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and upon to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Amen. And so, as women of God, amen, God has the has designed us in such a particular way, amen, with his divine beauty, amen. And he continues to mold us, amen. Every time that we think we got it right, amen, you can put on all the makeup that you want to, amen, but guess what? It is still there, amen. And God today, amen, is getting us ready, amen, for the higher call in him. Will you pull out your sister prayer? I am way over my time. I apologize. Let us stand to our feet. And our minister Rose has given us something soft. Amen. And we're going to repeat this prayer. I'm going to ask you all to sign off on it. Amen. And if you don't want to sign it because you want to make more copies, that's fine too. I got some for you. But let us all read this together. Everybody's there. Get your sister prayer out. And this is how we're going to close this conference. Amen. And this great inner healing and beauty today. In your goodie bags, we got a lot of little goodie things for our women. Amen. I pray that you have enjoyed them and we're going to ask the minister and Minister Pam. These people, I mean, I just called on and I'm telling you, um, there's nothing I cannot ask them to do. To our minister Nika, which is on her way, trying to leave one out of town, but yet has a love and passion for God's people and for her overseer, I admonish you. To all of you, to our newest one, Sister Pam Clement, I love you, sis. Go give God some praise. And just before we read this, now, after we read it, Come on up here with me. Come on, minister. Stand with me. Both of you, my ministers. These are God's name. We're going to read it together. We worship. We praise. It's beautiful. Everybody ready? And we recognize. Even though I am, we thank God for Brother DeAndre and Bishop Armin. A mighty man. Go get you a bag, son. I'm sure you're going to find something in that bag for you. Amen. <laughs> so Jelly, she had 10 y'all in her pocket. <laughs> but okay, amen. Are we ready? All right, sisters. It says, let's read together. Father, I ask you to bless my sister reading this right now. Lord, show her a new revelation of your love and power. Holy Spirit, I ask you to minister to us at this very moment. Where there is pain, give her your peace and mercy. Where there is self-doubting, release and renew confidence in your ability to work through her. Where there is tiredness or exhaustion, I ask you to give her understanding, patience, and strength. As she learns submission to your leading, where there is spiritual stagnation, 
I ask you to renew her by revealing your nearness and by drawing her into greater intimacy with you. Where there is fear, reveal your love and release to her your courage. Where there is sin blocking her, reveal it and bring it home over my sister's life. Bless her finances, give her greater vision and raise her up as a leader and a friend to support and encourage her. Give her discernment to recognize the demonic forces around her and reveal to her the power you have in you to defeat it. I ask you to do these things in Jesus' holy name, in Christian love, your sister in Christ. Come on and wave those that praise song. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. God bless you for making this first one. Amen. We'll be coming back at you. Amen. The elect women will definitely be back at you in the month of October. We ask you to please govern accordingly. We have some dates. Please, the anniversary. Don't go nowhere yet. The seventh year anniversary. We're going to close out with an altar call. Amen. But before we do just that, we're going to hear amen from our ministers. Y'all give God some praise. Amen. We're going to have prayer and we're going to go on over. Amen. And finish out our day. Praise the Lord. Thank you, saints, for being here. Appreciation. Because we love our ladies. Uh, we have uh, the gift for... We have a couple of love gifts. One is for Mr. Nika. Thank you, thank you. And for our beloved apostle, Adam. And we just want you to know we appreciate you guys and everything that you have done to pull this together today. And, and it, it is a success. And I'm taking away um, so many more things than I had when I came in. And I appreciate you and I love you. Thank you. Thank you all. as our music is turned up that we have reflected and again to our beloved pastor we just I don't know what to say you're such a dynamic woman of God Sister Gloria you took out the time I really appreciate that that you here today that tells me a lot about who you are today as well and to all you mighty women of God I mean y'all put your hands together hospitality setting up they went forth, amen. I'm telling you, I don't know what uh, Minister uh, Rose was running on last night, but uh, it was funny, amen. She was just like a little bunny. And we just was like, okay. And we, I was like this. And she was, was still Jesus, going, baby. amen. <laughs> total, total Jesus. Amen, total, amen. And then to our mother Ruth, who has drove so far, she really loves us. I admonish you. As an apostle of God, 
Amen. And we want to leave, amen, with this great blessing. Amen. And there's a lot of beauty in every one of you. Um, son, come get this DeAndre and move it to the side. We're going to ask at this time. I just want to bless you with some oil. We got the rest of the day. The sun is out. We're going to enjoy ourselves. Amen. Enjoy the sun. Bless the rest of the day. Give us some music there. Shall we? Amen. But other, come around the altar. Come on, let's bless. So I'm looking for the other one. Thank you, Jesus. After hearing the word, and there's more bags. We got a lot of good stuff, but we want to make sure some of y'all can even take an extra bag home. Each bag got something a little different in it. Amen. And again, I thank God. Amen. For Valencia, she went and supported Brother Jonathan. They was in a parade, Daffodil, this morning. I want to give God some praise to my Coley Cole all the way on the other side of the mountain. Y'all give God some praise. Amen. Anytime your young men and women can come home from college, thank you, Jesus, and want to be a part of their own church. Y'all, that says something about us. Amen. And I'm just, I'm just so blessed today. Amen. These mighty women of God. Thank you, God. Come on, connect, women. Just put your arms out all the way. Come on, family. Come on, boy. Lock it up. Lock it up. And there's no debates. And we recognize you already.
Jesus. Oh, bless your name now. Nobody but you. Nobody but you. Nobody but you. Hurry up, Nicole. Go behind Pam. Worship him. Open your mouth and speak unto him. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tambourine, honey. Thank you, Jesus. Shake it, baby. There you go. Oh, bless your name. Have your way. Have your way. Oh, 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 we thank you all for this year. In obedience, amen, we stood. Thank you, Jesus. Let the Lamb of God go with you. Go in peace. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all give me some good ones. This is what I'm talking about. God, continue to create. Continue to work over. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come behind the pastor. Come here, precious. Lift your hands, yeah? In obedience, lift your hands. Come behind, quickly. Come on, Minister Rose. Yaba, Chokaba, Hitama, Heke, yeah, na, 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 na. Shaba, ba, 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 ha, ya. Uriya, ba, 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 sha. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. Bring the mother to me, yeah, ba, 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 ba. Thank you, God. In obedience, y'all get behind her, get behind her, yeah. God's gonna bless her for obedience. Who shall bring her under the most high? Ready, y'all, my, 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 my. Give me my towel, yeah, show for it. Yeah, my God. Hey, say, get not now, bo. Hey, say, no, 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 that's your towel, right? My towel. Hey, come, my, 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 my. He say, get not now, now, now. He tell me. Oh, so for the most in Tanana, oh, Colonel and our son, Nana, he Tanana, my son, he Tanana, my cat, and he sat at the Lavosia, oh, Tonabosa, he Tanana, Sekiraba, who Tanabasa, that's an every door, every door, he told the enemy to loose, set free. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all give God some praise. The power of the living God. Look at this. Uh, look at them. They're witnessing. They're good shots. Uh, that they can see. Uh, that the world can see. When God is in control. Uh, it's nobody. But it's the anointing. Uh, look at that. Uh, angels. Uh, presence of God. Uh, all over them. Uh, Y'all wave those towels. Uh, wave your towels. Uh, the power. Uh, the precious anointing of God. Hey. Uh, he said, only believe, only believe, only believe, only believe, all things, all things, all things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't give us some praise. Come on, Paul. Some of you gotta have that Paul spirit. Hey, help our mother up. Help our pastor. Help this prophetess up. Hey, God, I'm also. You got to tell the mother. Yeah, I'm all shaking. He said, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is showing down on you. He's speaking to you. Oh, come on and work with her at the altar. He Mira 
miracles uh, got to come forth. Uh, miracles. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, no temples. Uh, 50 days. Uh, preparation. Uh, preparation. Uh, preparation. Uh, preparation, daughter. Uh, preparation. Uh, he's preparing you. Uh, you're on the wheel. Uh, and every time uh, you think you got it right, uh, God says, ah, uh, uh, I'm over and over again. Uh, But I know you are my deliverer. I know you are my healer. I know you're my way maker. I know you are my burden bearer. I know I should have That's what I'm talking about. We got some shedding in this dude. Holy Ghost says shedding. Come here, baby. Come here, Lorraine. Don't come behind her. Get that camera for me for a second. Hey, Shokorobosa. It's just not by chance. God is healing your body. And in due season, it ain't gonna see Kiana. Oh, total love of your son. He's gonna raise up that woman. That's on the inside. Yo, come behind her. Na, 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 na. God is healing your wounded heart, your wounded spirit. He's raising up a standard in you. It's not by chance, daughter, that all these events at this place, when God had you here for a divine purpose, to show his mercy at the new day. God is calling the Lorenas to come forth in the name of Jesus. He honors you, daughter. He loves you, daughter. He wants you to know that you are loved. He said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every, every, every thing the enemy thought he could put on you. God said it is not so. God's going to release you. Hey! Oh, y'all catch this thing here, honey. I come against the diabetes. Ooh, I come against the obesity. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, na, 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 It's the heart. Uh, ba, ba, ba. He shot. Oh, I need believers here. I need believers here. Oh, God, oh, oh, son, the devil is a liar. God strengthened every vial of our heart, uh, every passageway. Uh, oh, yeah, ba, 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 ba. Yeah. 
Jesus. We are your sisters. We stand with you. Oh, bless your name. Power of the living God. Power of the living God. Oh, God, oh, God. Thank you, God. Spirit of loneliness. Victory, 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 victory of our life, victory of the work in the kingdom, victory, God. Oh, God, we thank you. God, we praise you. Oh, God, we thank you. God, we praise you. Oh, God,